Step two in our problem solving strategy. Once you have your variables listed, that is what you know and what you don't know, it's time to decide on a formula to use. Having your variables well organized makes this step much easier. On a standard physics formula sheet, including the one for this course, you'll find the following kinematics equations, or slight variations of them. The first two you've probably seen in previous courses. Note that the VAV is just V if the acceleration is zero, that is the velocity isn't changing. They are all just variations on the same relationships between A, D, T, V naught, and VF. So if all these equations work for the problems you'll be facing, how do you determine which one to use? It really comes down to how you can solve the problem the easiest. Most physics problems can be solved more than one way. That is, you can come up with the same answer by using different equations. Given that, solving a problem most efficiently requires that you carefully consider your list of knowns and unknowns. Is there an equation that has my desired unknown, so I can solve for it, and everything else in the equation is something that I do know. If so, then I have a nice one-step solution. If not, I may have to do the problem in multiple steps. This list makes it much easier to go to the formula sheet and easily consider which equation might suit us best. How about Vav equals delta d over delta t? Well, we're looking for A, and it's not even in this equation, so let's try for a better solution. How about Vf squared equals V naught squared plus 2AD? It has the A in it, which is great, but it also has a D in it for displacement, and we don't know the displacement, so let's see if there's a better equation to use. This one also requires a D, so let's look again for a better solution. How about Vf equals V0 plus At? This one has an A in it, good. It doesn't have a D in it, which is also good. They are unknown. It has a T in it. We know the time. It also has a Vf and a V0, both of which we know. Indeed, the only variable we don't know in this equation is the A, which makes it a great equation for this problem. Note that a equals V av over delta t would do the job great as well. So we'll write down this equation exactly how we find it on the formula sheet to ensure we don't mess anything up. Then on the next line, we rearrange it for our particular purpose. In this case, we rearrange it to solve for A. Finally, we plug in the numbers and solve. We can check the units at the end as well. So that's how you pick your formula. You list your knowns and unknowns, then use this list to help choose the best formula. Given this, could you have solved the displacement first, then the acceleration? You would end up with the same solution, a bit more work, but certainly correct, a fair solution. As you get into even more complicated problems, you may have to be more creative with your problem solving. Given this, feeling perfectly comfortable with listing your variables, your knowns and unknowns, and then choosing an appropriate formula will always help, no matter how complicated your problems get.